Hello and welcome to the Friday, January 19th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Onapsis, a company that deals with the security of enterprise resource planning systems like SAP and Oracle, has taken a closer look at the vulnerability that was exploited to install these crypto miners. Now, this vulnerability was patched in October and it was a vulnerability in WebLogic. The issue here is that WebLogic is middleware. So it's really a component of a number of additional systems. And as Onapsis points out, it goes well beyond PeopleSoft. For example, the Oracle eBusiness Suite, well, uh, WebLogic is part of it and it could be compromised using this particular flaw in WebLogic. Now, whenever you have a web application vulnerability like this, uh, how much you can do with it depends very much on the user the application is running as. If this is a low privilege user that doesn't really have access to anything, then it can be quite limited. But in this case, actually, WebLogic is running as a privileged user, the application manager, APPL MGR. On Apsys shows how this attack can be used to do much more than just install a crypto miner. For example, they demonstrate how data can be retrieved from the Oracle eBusiness suite pretty much at will. So if you find one of these crypto miners running on your system, double check and make sure that there's nothing else going on here. Yes, the crypto miner is of the big and easy to find exploit for this particular vulnerability, but there may be more going on in the system that doesn't really stick out as easily. And with all the fallout about Spectre and Meltdown, Microsoft had run into a problem where some AMD CPUs didn't play well with its latest patches. So Microsoft stopped actually offering some of the Spectre patches for systems running AMD CPUs. Well, according to AMD, some of these patches, not all of them, are now available again. So you may see them popping up on your system. What appears to be holding things back is that AMD AMD has to release a new microcode to go with these patches. Apparently that's supposed to happen within the next week or so, definitely before the next Microsoft patch Tuesday. And talking about Spectre and Meltdown, there was quite a bit of talk on Twitter about a website someone put up saying that there are more vulnerability that they're calling Skyfall and Solace. Well, uh, no details at all at this point. They're saying that things are in the quarantine and they're waiting for it to be released responsibly. However, there seems to be some consensus that this may really just be a bad joke. So if you saw any news, if you saw any tweets about this, just sit back and wait. Uh, really not, nothing much you can do, whether this is real or whether it's a joke. So uh, don't worry about it too much for now. And medical devices are back in the news and of course not in a good way. This time it's another infusion pump, the Smith's Medfusion 4000. Well, it's actually not quite as bad as some of the others that I've seen. First of all, when you first start up the system, it does start up in a somewhat safe way where it does not offer any remote admin capability via the network. But of course you can enable Enable that, and that's sort of where things go bad pretty quickly. There are default passwords that the user cannot change that are hidden in the firmware and not documented. That's probably always the worst case scenario. Also, they are running an outdated DHCP client with a remote code execution vulnerability. The system apparently also tries to connect to Wi-Fi automatically. That's sort of another way how this particular pump could probably be attacked. I didn't see the name of the researcher anywhere, but I would like to commend them for actually holding back on publishing all the details. The companies were notified in July and now after a patch was released, these details were made public. And Xavier today took a look at one of the often forgotten features in PCAP NG. PCAP NG is the next generation of the PCAP format. And one of the interesting features it offers is the ability to add comments to the files and to individual packets. So he's looking at uh, some tools here, like for example, Moloch in order to take advantage of this feature. 
So if you're dealing a lot with PCAP files, take a look and uh, see what you can do to switch to this newer format. It's not as widely supported yet as it probably should be supported. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.